Hey, this is Dan with Shannon Designs, and I've got Logan here helping me out. We're working on a collaboration with Framing Tech, so I came up with a design. They provided a kit with the pre-cut piece of aluminum materials, which we're going to put together with some basic hand tools. So today, we're going to be building a downdraft table, which is a work surface used in sanding and grinding. All right, we just got the kit unboxed. Everything was super well packaged. The framing was shrink wrapped, panels had protective film, and everything was just tightly wrapped in heavy duty cardboard. They had protective corners on boxes, so nothing got here scuffed or dented. Just a really nice job overall. So Framing Tech shipped these cut to length machined with connectors pre-installed just like this. So that makes for really easy assembly. They're the experts when it comes to hardware selection. So we just sent the frame design, excluding all the hardware, and they took it from there. So they also provided some drawings for the kit, which show the cut lengths, part numbers, and bill of materials. So with some basic understanding of how the connectors work, this is really all you need to be able to assemble it. All right, so we got the base all put together. So next step, we gotta flip it on the side and put the casters on. All right, so this one has a T-nut, just one of these. So that goes into the slot, and then we do the same thing up here. So basically we put those on first, get them in the slot. We've got a threaded end on this piece of T-slot. You can see here, this is what I was talking about with the end of the T-slot being threaded. Uh, it's just a threaded insert that threads in there. It's like a self-tapping insert that threads in with a Allen key. So these T-nuts can be kind of tricky sometimes, but if it's not getting lined up the right way, what you have to do is back it out a little bit, and then as you push it in and turn, it should rotate and engage with the T-slot. So now we're putting panels on. This one has countersunk screws and drop-in nuts. The drop-in hardware makes things really easy as we can just pre-install the hardware. That way we can just set the whole panel on as one piece instead of trying to get the holes lined up with the nuts in the T-slot later. All right, we just got the panel in. You can see we've got the, the nuts and the screws already installed. So those aren't tightened down yet. We just had them dropped into the slot. And then we have all these posts just loosely in place right now. If you tighten them down too soon, trying to get the panel on over the top is kind of difficult. So that was the easiest way to do it. Now we just go around and start tightening these up. doing the back panel you can see we've got a seal down here I guess we probably cut that one a little bit short but that's all right and then we've got seals in the t-slot here and so that panel just dropped in from the top put the seals in first and then drop the panel in all right putting our seals this way so these will seal off the slots on this side. We're gonna have a panel, removable panel on the front here. So we wanna keep this sealed so that dust isn't going in there. And those just pop in, just like that. So order of assembly can be really important. You can see here, we forgot to put a panel on before assembling that part of the frame. But fortunately, it's a really easy fix. We just had to loosen some hardware and slide the panel right in. Press 
really important if you have countersinks to make sure they're facing the right way. We had to take that off and put it back on again. Putting seals on, we've already got these ones pressed in on the sides. And then we're doing the long one on the bottom there. So Logan's gonna drop that one in. Okay, so one of the last things is getting the grate put on. So I've got it zip tied to these middle supports here, and then I'm putting some foam backer rod. I just cut these to length and then put a slit in them with a razor blade. Those just go on like this, and that just helps basically absorb any vibration. So now I got everything zip tied. I've got my foam backer rod to absorb vibration. This seems like it's ready to go, so time to try it out. All right, so let's check out the damage. Oh yeah, there's definitely some metal dust in there. And it's all on this side right where I was grinding. I mean, there's a little bit over here, but it looks like pretty much went from right there, right on down. Our filters look good, that's what I expect. That wasn't very much grinding, so it's gonna be a while before we start to notice any difference there. The main goal of this is to keep it out of our lungs, keep it out of the air, and just keep it from settling over everything in the shop and just making a general mess. So from that standpoint, this is a huge win. So overall, this project turned out great. First of all, it looks really cool. From a design perspective, this was actually a pretty challenging project. It looks really simple, but there's actually a lot going on here with all the different panels and the seals and trying to make this panel removable and also make it all easy to assemble. You can see from the smoke test how much airflow we were getting. These are pretty small box fans. Just went with 20 inch box fans that are readily available off the shelf. That was a little bit challenging, but you know, honestly, it wasn't too bad. You know, that's one of the cool things about this T-slot stuff. It's just so adaptable for any situation. Framing Tech did an awesome job executing on the design, sending the kit, everything's ready to go. Super simple to assemble. A lot of the hardware is already installed in the T-slot stuff. Everything was really well packaged. Nothing got here damaged, which is impressive. You've got big, heavy, oversized aluminum parts, and then these big panels that are Pretty easy to scuff if you handle them wrong. They had them super well packaged. This sign turned out really cool. That's probably my favorite part. A three layer plastic, so it's like white on both sides and then blue in the middle. And they just machined it out on the CNC. I exposed the, the blue background for the logo. So that turned out really cool. I'll be able to use this for a really long time in the shop and it's gonna save me a lot of trouble. Well, that's a wrap for now, so we're gonna go ahead and end it here. But if you haven't already clicked the subscribe button down there, that's the best way to stay up to date on any new projects that we have coming out. You can drop a comment if you have any questions or want some more information. We'll get back to you that way, or you can email dan at shannerdesigns.com, and that works too. So I think that's all we got. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching. Project? Did you have fun?